It's time to go to work. The Jerk of All Trades podcast is back with episode number 26 for you. What is up, Ray? Lucky number 26, man. This is my lucky number, and this should be a lucky show for us today and a lucky show for all the fans of the Jerk of All Trades podcast. Absolutely. Because we are back after a small sabbatical. <laughs> we are rusty uh yeah i thought i thought you were taking that say something but uh i thought you were oh. gonna keep going oh yeah 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 we got a great show lined up for everyone today we've got uh we've got netflix co-founder that wants uh, everyone to be able to go to the movie theater uh every as many times as they want for ten dollars ten dollars a month uh we got a porn website x hamster that wants to uh get a big budget show that uh, netflix doesn't want anymore uh we got some uh we got cal exit uh california looking to possibly secede uh we got a lot of fun videos we got the juggalo rally so we've got so much so much lined up for everyone today so it's going to be a great show yes lots of craziness going on in the world Hopefully, everybody is safe and sound wherever you're at. Hopefully, yeah. if you're listening to this, it's a good sign, and that means everything's okay. I would hope so. If you're not, if you're in peril, you probably shouldn't be listening to the Jerk of All Trades podcast. No, so. well, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe, you maybe should. they need a good laugh or something. So yeah, if absolutely. We can, if we can give you a good laugh, that's good. Uh, me and Ray took some time to take a break. We were, had some ideas for the show and stuff. Uh, we were thinking about starting up a Patreon. We still might do that, but in this time of you know hurricanes and people not having houses to live in i find it a little difficult to ask people for money right now so. but if you want to give us money anyways you can go to our website i mean and our if support you want page. to yeah we have a support we page. still want to go to bald head island I don't what, th- what's the link joat podcast.com slash support, uh, support. Yep. okay so if yeah, you absolutely have to give us your money go ahead and do it but uh yeah it's it's a little tough for me right now with yeah, the yeah. people floating in the water with a, without a house to live in. I, I feel you on that. So, man, any, so, anyways, back to our regularly scheduled program, Game of Thrones, Ray. Yes. Yeah, so we promised you guys some Game of Thrones talk. This yes. might not be what you th- were expecting. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, man. When you play the Game of Thrones, you either download it or mm, it seems like that's all you do is you just download it. So let's talk about piracy and game of thrones and a little bit of hack a little bit of hack action too yeah we got the game of thrones is changing the game game of thrones has been pirated as of september 3rd over a million or i'm sorry a billion One times billion billion times so if this show would have came out like 25 years ago hbo would be like uh on bald head island with bill gates and fucking uh richard guy, branson richard and, branson and, yeah. and jeff bezos and shit right yeah but yeah. since it came out in 2015 or whenever it came out they're not making any money off this shit because people are just watching it however they i want. mean i think that they're still doing all right for themselves uh they have the numbers here um and i can't find the actual numbers of well, how many times it was legally uh watched but uh it was watched a lot, yeah. it was watched a lot of times oh, legally. i'm sure they're not hurting but i'm just saying it would have been astronomical what's well, like tv ratings like you know back in the day pro wrestling used to get really high monday night ratings and now those ratings probably used to get really high monday off. night oh yeah and then tuesday night too and so with, with the streaming and the downloads and the torrents it's easier to just say you know what I can wait. Even Hulu Plus, if you got Hulu Plus, it's like, eh, I'm kind of busy on Monday. Let me go ahead and check this shit out on a Wednesday or something. Yeah, I mean, the way that you watch television is much different than the way it used to be where, you know, you had to watch it at that exact moment. Now you don't have to do that. Now you can watch it whenever the hell you want to watch it, and you can watch it for free, too, which is also nice instead of having to, you know, pay for a ton of services, which I actually do. I mean, despite the fact that, you, you know. You pay a lot. My, fr- my friend illegally downloads Allegedly. things. Allegedly. Um, but I will tell you that 
um, you know, having a service like Netflix or Amazon Prime or actually I have Amazon Prime more, you know, just for the shipping, but the, the video yeah. is actually an added <laughs> bonus. But, um, you know, it, I've, you know, I've utilized some of these other things like uh, Cody and that. And uh, a lot of times the interface and stuff really sucks and, you know, you get bad streams and shit. And so that's one thing with Netflix, Hulu, all that type of stuff. For the most part, it seems to work pretty well. I was trying to watch the uh, Conor McGregor Mayweather fight during the fight um, on Cody and yeah, it was just a done deal. I gave up and, uh, and I still didn't pay for it. I <laughs> waited until it was over and I downloaded it, but still um, same, same difference, but yeah. Um, HBO. Yeah. They're, uh, they're so- saying here episode one of the last season, the newest season had, 16 million plays on the HBO app compared to 187 million plays from illegal sites. That's from one episode. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't help either with the hack that uh, that recently happened to HBO. Um, so we can kind of maybe talk a little bit about that. We don't have to mm-hmm. talk a ton about it, but um, well, I just wanted to get that out there while yeah. while we were still talking about. Views. So we had like the uh, episode six, I believe it was that you know that was actually a third party <laughs> in another country that put it up on um, to a um, oh, the one an on demand site. The one that came out like uh, yeah, like a week, a week early before. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, you know that got posted online and that didn't help things at all. But I mean, I think people were waiting anyways. People were still watching it like as it happened too because they didn't want it to be ruined. But you know, not me. Obviously, a lot of people were watching it after the fact as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. I just, yeah, you know, if you wave a piece of chocolate cake in front of a six year old child, they're gonna eat that motherfucker. It's just the way it is. Absolutely, I'm not comparing myself to a six year old child, but with Game of Thrones, I do have childish. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too, though, with these services is that you have to determine, you know, so like as a subscriber, a couple of these things, you know, personally, I have Netflix, I have Amazon Prime, and then I have Shudder um, as I'm a big horror fan. But you have to kind of choose where to put your money. And if you have every goddamn streaming service out there, you're going to be paying more than the goddamn cable. Cable, bill. yeah. So you have to determine, you know, what do you think is worth it? And so I think there's certain services like Netflix that, you know, really has appealed to me that has a lot of good original content and stuff where it's worth it because of the interface and the ease of having it on, you know, my console, my fire stick, whatever I'm going to pay for it. Uh, but HBO, I mean, there's just not a lot that really appeals to me on that. So personally, I'm not going to pay for HBO go or whatever the hell it's called. So, um, yeah, I'm going to watch game of Thrones illegally, like, you is, know, is 174 price... billion other people or whatever. <laughs> hell yeah. Is the price range the same for HBO or do you not know? Yeah, I think it's $10 a month. Okay, but still, it's not as much quality, right? As I mean, I guess it depends on what you're looking for. I mean, there obviously HBO has a lot of you know original I looking, content. I ain't looking stuff. for shit. I get all my shit for free. God damn it! No. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have Netflix now, sort of. Right? Uh, I, yeah, I kind of had me a little Netflix action. I have Amazon Prime as well. I also have. Uh, well, we won't talk about that one. But uh, <laughs> Hulu Plus. Uh, my buddy in Florida. You might know something about this. He signed up for Hulu Plus and tried to cancel it within like the 30-day yeah. trial or 14-day trial. Canceled the thing, but he canceled it through email. He didn't cancel it through the website. Mm. So they stopped charging his card, but he never lost access to Hulu Plus. Wow, that's actually <laughs> that is the reverse of what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> because normally what happens is anytime I sign up for a free trial or anything, I have to know how I'm going to be able to cancel it right away because I know that that's how they get you. Like they get you on the auto renewal thing and yeah. they hope that you're going to forget. So usually what I will do is I will normally sign up for something and then I will immediately cancel it right away. And then it lets you keep it for the week. I've actually got yeah, you get that grace period, right? I've actually uh, one time before I signed up for a free trial of uh sling. You know what that is? Sling TV, sling TV. I signed up for that when you canceled it. Um, let's say you signed up for it. You had a week. If you canceled it, it automatically canceled it right away. Ooh. Like it didn't even give you the week. Like you, if you canceled it, you were, it was a done deal. They and shut, I was like, fuck sling dude. Yeah, fuck that. They shut your shit down. <laughs> yeah. I don't want, I don't want your shitty service. So I always make sure they always make it really, really complicated. It's super easy to sign up for these things, but it's really, really complicated to cancel them. And so that's their goal. And so I'm always trying to find a way around that. 
I've like on Amazon has like a bunch of like channels and stuff like they have like stars and some other crap. And like occasionally I'll look up a movie and it's on that service. And so like I'll sign up for the free trial just so I can watch like nine, seven, six evil part two or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I immediately cancel it. So, but you only get the seven days and then it's done. You can't sign up for it again. So, but, oh, well craziness yeah yeah so the uh yeah uh, i don't think we really talked about the hack really all that much uh i thought that was pretty interesting this guy named mr smith uh you know had a bunch of he had a show that was supposed to debut next year that he had already leaked he leaked a bunch of curb your enthusiasm which i actually love that show he leaked that um and i thought one of the most interesting con uh uh things to come out of this was that hbo tried to pay this motherfucker off like they tried to give him two hundred and fifty thousand dollars at the beginning of this to not leak this stuff and you guess he turned it down because he did it anyway god damn that's a lot of cake yeah yeah that's a lot of dough for uh illegally for, for committing a crime right you get paid off for doing illegal activities yeah i mean what are we teaching our children <laughs> that become you a hacker and get 250k yeah, from that fucking you should Netflix. Be, yeah and then eventually you know you get good enough at hacking and then you become like a white hacker and you get ha- uh well not white like you know you're white but i am white. like jesus but uh, you like know, Santa Claus, you get hired by the companies to basically try to prevent other yeah, hackers. You become you know, cybersecurity, right? Exactly. So, so definitely become a hacker, and your uh, your life will be uh, the shit. So. Yeah, pretty much. Um, did we did we talk about the lost revenue? Did uh, did you hit those numbers? No, nah, I, I was waiting. Yeah, uh, I, I, hit, I like the ca- casual conversation we're having. Hit here. me, uh, hit me with the numbers on this. Well, on the website I was looking at, it said in 2010. The Directors Guild of America pegged the annual cost of global piracy to American companies at $25 billion in lost sales. This translated into 375,000 jobs lost each year. And in 2006, the Motion Picture Association of America commissioned a study that found film piracy cost the U.S. economy $20.5 billion. That's a long time ago, and I'm a, I can only imagine those numbers have gone way up way 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 up billions and billions and billions of dollars yeah so i don't know exactly how they determined these numbers and equated the actual dollar amount but i think what this boils down to is the same thing that i saw happen when the napster thing first hit and all the artists were like this many people downloaded my album and so thus those are lost sales and those are sales that i could have had and so that equates to this dollar amount and i think they say the same thing about movies tv shows whatever and i think the thing with that is it doesn't really though because here's the thing so if i've got oranges right let's just say i'm selling oranges on the side of the road and i'm selling them for you know 50 cents a piece i don't know the breakdown of what oranges sell for but 50 cents a piece so how many people do you think are going to come up and buy an orange for me? I don't know. Whatever. That's how many oranges do you have? Whatever. Let's say that 10 people come up and buy an orange for me, right? So whatever. We do the math on that. You know, you figure whatever. I make five bucks, right? I don't think that math was right. Was that math right? Yeah, that it was is right. correct. That was correct. Okay. So now let's say that I'm giving them away for free, right? So obviously more people are going to get oranges. You need more than 10 apples. <laughs> right. Oranges. Or I'm sorry. Oh, apples. This is apples this and is oranges. Apples orange? Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> get with me. Get with me here. You do have a very valid point. So the point is, is that it, more people are going to take oranges if they're free than sure. if they're not free. Right. So I'm, those don't immediately equate to, to sales. I'm so. telling you right now, Ray is right because I would not watch Game of Thrones if I had to pay for it. I, I probably just wouldn't. Even though it's a very good show, um, it on the surface, you know, ignorant, stupid Eddie would look at it and say, eh, it's got dragons, right. it's got this goofy stuff that I normally don't watch. I'll Huge. pass. I'm not going to pay $10 a month to watch this stupid show. That was that was the next part of my example was going to be, so let's say I've never eaten an orange before, right? I've <laughs> never had an orange, right? And so someone gives me an orange for free, and then I'm like, oh my God, I fucking love Great. oranges. Yeah. And then in the future... They're not giving away oranges for free, right? Now they're selling them for a dollar. But maybe I'm like, fuck, I'm going to buy an orange now because I really like oranges. So I think that really plays with like music too, because there's a lot of other branches in music. So like maybe, you know, you're testing out music, you're trying it out, and now you're a fan of the band. And now you go see the band live or you buy their t shirt. And instead of buying a little shitty plastic disc that's going to inevitably end up in a box in your basement, instead you, you know, invest in a t shirt that's going to end up in 
a box in your basement. Maybe Dude, I was so but, disgusted I when I moved from Florida. How many CDs I had in my closet? I know I still have them, <laughs> and it's yeah. What am I gonna do with all this crap? Uh, CDs, DVDs. Have you ever seen Shaun of the Dead before? Uh, bits and pieces. Bits so and pieces. yeah, there's there's a point where they're throwing records out into the to the sky and they're shooting them with a gun and you know to Pre- distract. Yeah. yeah, pretty much what I should have done with those CDs. And yeah. I don't even Throwing know why I zombies. brought them to Florida with me. What was I thinking? Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to listen to these CDs. Yeah. Well, anyway. So, yeah, those don't immediately equate to sales. So I don't agree with those dollar amounts. But I will say that I'm sure that there's tons and tons of lost revenue from it. But here's the big thing. You're not going to stop piracy. You're never going to stop piracy. Oh, no, never. So, you know, like, how do you how do you deal with it the best way that you possibly can? And that is the way that the music industry, for example, did well you know after a long you know time uh things like spotify and stuff like i pay ten dollars a month for spotify why because it's easier and it's a better interface than me downloading a bunch of music that i then have to transfer onto my phone whatever um i can get spotify and then you know of course spotify is not all that amazing for artists and they kind of get fucked that way but at least they get a little bit more money than if people illegally download their stuff so i mean you have to change you have to do something different and yeah i mean you have to adapt I think our next story will kind of be a little bit about that adaptability. So. Sure. All right, my friends. Ray, when was the last time you actually went to the movie theater to watch a movie? This was written by Eddie for me. I don't know. <laughs> actually, I do know. I actually went and saw the amazing movie, Get Out. You went to the movie theater for that? Yes, I did, actually. Did you try to get a refund? No, I did not. Uh, I actually, uh, I would have liked to have seen it a second time in the theater. Uh, but anyway, from what I've been reading, Movie Pass may be uh, what gets me to go back more often. So yeah, let's, yes, uh, let's talk about this. Because Get Out came out like over a year ago and you haven't been back to the movies. Yeah, I, 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 it's possible <laughs> that I'm trying to remember if I've gone to the movie theater since then and I don't really. Yeah, you did. Alien. Oh, alien covenant. yes, you're right. But still, I, that was like alien, four months ago. Alien Covenant, that's right. And which I did actually like going because the theater by me now has badass like uh, recliner seats that are heated and open rows and stuff. But still, I mean, I still don't really go that much. Why? Because it's fucking expensive. <laughs> but Absolutely. it doesn't have to be. No, hell no. There's a ex- net Netflix suit and current movie pass CEO Mitch Lowe intends to slash the price of a movie pass subscription. Do we have that in Kenosha? Uh, so the, the thing is basically you sign up for it and then any movie theater that takes debit cards, then you can so go. It, we do have it. So, yeah, I mean, which I would assume. So a, the AMC, which is one of the, the, that's the theater that's in the town to the north of us. Yeah. Um, they're not very happy about this. So, yeah. Uh, and then the, I mean, I think every movie theater takes debit cards, right? I, 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 doesn't. I, I don't know. It's been so long since I've been there. <laughs> yeah, when's the last time you went to the movie theater? I went in Florida my first year down there. But before that, which was like fucking seven years ago. And then before that, I hadn't gone in like probably like three or four years before that. So it has, it has been You don't really like movies while. that much though, right? You no. Know? I, well, I like good movies. I don't like sitting through a, a long ass boring ass yeah shit i would that wasn't that was like a pot shot by the way because you always talk about how amazing your movie taste is and mine well better. not always if i go see a movie and i don't know if it sucks or not it's it could suck like well that that's when you I just, don't you don't go see it no well i just sat in the movie <laughs> for two and a half hours yeah. and i was like god damn it i sat here for fucking two and a half hours the movie never got good i was hoping it would get better this whole time never did wasted my fucking life yeah, yeah. But anyways, I mean, it was an experience, right? No, it, it was a bad experience. The one I don't want to experience. This is a again. hypothetical experience. It didn't even fucking happen. But let me right? tell you, if, <laughs> if I only had to pay ten dollars a rails, month, off the rails. If I only had to pay ten dollars a month, maybe I wouldn't be so mad about it. I mean, this would be another thing, though, where you'd have to choose where to put your money. So, I mean, honestly, I. So this is cool. So basically what this is, the movie passes essentially that you can go to the movie theater as many times as you want in one month. It used to cost $30 and now it costs $10. 10 bucks. So I think it's actually really cool and I am a big movie fan. And so I would like to do this, 
But here's the one caveat to this. If they can for give me, me that free popcorn, I'd be, I'd be good. Yeah, the problem for me is that, I mean, not to sound like a fucking hipster, but I'm sure I'm going to. I mean, honestly, the mainstream movie output doesn't really appeal to me all that much. And that's one of the reasons why I don't go to the movie theater that much, aside from the fact that it's expensive. If there's a movie that comes out that I really want to see, I'm going to probably go see it. Like the Blade Runner movie that's coming out, I'm going to go see that. And it's going to be expensive. I'm going to pay for it. Doesn't matter because I think it looks good and I want to go see it. Um, actually, I think I may. Oh, no, never mind. That's a different movie. Um, I was trying to think there was a movie I saw after Alien, but it was before that. Anyway, um, but I think this is kind of like for me is still in the realm of like anytime. So we have uh, Six Flags Great America here. And anytime that I have ever said to myself, Hey, instead of just buying a single day ticket, you know, they have for like a little bit more, you can get the season pass. And then I'm like, fuck it. Well, I guess I'll pay the extra 20 bucks or whatever the hell it is. So I can get the season pass because it makes more sense. Cause I'm going to go a bunch of times. Right. And then like, inevitably I go like one time eh. and then I fucking wait, <laughs> I fucking wasted my fucking money. So I will say though, that $10 a month is actually quite a bit. Li- I mean, you can't even go to the movies one time for $10 no, a month. Not even um, close. So it definitely, it's uh it's a cool concept. And if there was a theater here, like there's some theaters that are in some bigger cities where they show like, older movies, offbeat movies, cult movies, stuff like that, then I would be all about this shit. Like if I lived in Texas and I could go to the Alamo draft house, I would be all about this. Sure. Um, but and there's here, no maximum on there, right? You can go every single day. You could literally go every single day. You could probably go multiple days. I like, got some ideas for this guy here. Get Every 30 days, you get mailed to you like a hole punch card with 30 dots on it. Let's say you go 10 times in a month, you get free popcorn. You go 20 times in a month, you get a free, but you get to bring somebody in for free as well. Like yeah. there could be perks. That would like, be cool some perks. if he could get the movie theaters to like feed into this and to yeah. help him with this. That, that would what would be needed. And I, that's definitely not what's happening here. So I don't know, actually know what the business model exactly is on how he is like how this works and that you get a ticket based on the fee that you're paying for the movie pass thing. Like I don't know the connection on that. Um, so. Because, I mean, the AMC theaters are fucking pissed about this. They are not liking this, and they do not want this to continue <laughs> to happen. I believe that they said that the price is unsustainable and only sets up consumers for ultimate disappointment down the road if or when the product can no longer be fulfilled. So, I mean, I think that, yeah, this is probably one of those things where it's like, this is like the free trial, right? Yeah. This is like the the week free trial. and then Let's you Let know, me test it out. Right, and then they're going to jack it up to $30 again, which is still really not that bad because, honestly, now, if you go on a busy day on a Friday or something for two people, and God forbid you get a bunch of you know popcorn and soda and stuff, you're going to spend more than $30 for sure on this. I think in 2009, when I took a date to the movie, it was close to like 30 35 bucks easily. I talked to someone that went and saw it, and they said that with their food and stuff, they spent $50. So, Jesus Christ. That's criminal. insanity to me, man. For that one is, movie? Right. For, for one person or for, two people? For two people. Okay, two people is still high, but it's a little more understandable. Yeah, but that's still a lot. But we're right? living in an age where not only can you watch shit for free, but if you want a step up from that, like a Netflix or Hulu, you only have to pay 10 bucks for the whole month. I know. So in a way, this does make complete and utter sense. Oh, I agree. This is definitely the movie. The movie theater model is outdated. I think they've done some cool things like they've ramped. They've like kind of updated their theaters and stuff like I thought that was a cool experience when I first went to this theater and they had, you know, I hated going to the theater because if I got stuck in the middle and I had to take a piss, it's like, oh, man, I got to walk by everyone and feel like a dick where now the the rows are fucking huge and there's a lot less seats and you get to pick your seat before you go in and you got the reclining seats and stuff. It's super comfortable. So now when Ray wants to use the bathroom, he just gets up and starts twerking. Right. Yeah. I do my (laughs) helicopter. I do my helicopter. (laughs) <laughs> I urinating. got so much room. I got so much room. They should have urinals directly in front of the actual seat. That would be cool. Um, but anyway, yeah. So uh, I think they've done some cool things, but still, I mean, it's fucking expensive to go. And so, and here's the other big thing too. So like back in my day, 
if you didn't see a movie at the movie theater, you had to wait like what a decade before it came out on VHS. Uh, yeah, and like then it when fucking you took forever. To, when you wanted to rent it, it was always out at the movie oh, store. My, yeah. Dude, it was always video it store. was always out unless you knew someone at a fucking that worked at a video store, which we did. Yeah, and uh, and it looked like shit too. <laughs> this coming from someone that just bought a VCR again. Uh, but yeah, you know, it was a different experience. Things looked so much better. Now it's like. Dude, I bought a fucking projector from, you know, the fucking store for 80 bucks that, you know, actually doesn't look that bad. And I get a fucking sheet and put it outside of my garage and it looks pretty badass. So it's definitely quite a different era than what we grew up in. And so there's not there, you know, unless I really, really, really have to see a movie when it first comes out, I don't have to go to the movie theater. It's a luxury. And so this is kind of this would, you know, potentially I don't know that I would sign up for this, but. You know, if I lived in a different city and there was different availability for movies that were in the theater, I would probably if I had a I would probably sign up for obsessive it. compulsive movie going girlfriend. This is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, oh my god! You might, you might get the pot of gold to... at the end of the rainbow yeah. if you took it to the movies like every day. I don't have to spend fifty dollars a night going to the movies anymore. I only have to spend ten dollars a get, month. You can get your popcorn bucket hand job, dude. For get the fuck thirty out times of here. or thirty one or twenty eight oh. or twenty nine, depending on how many days are in the month. Um, and you know you can get it for ten dollars a month. Right? Honestly, they could make this like 30. and the cost of popcorn. 30 bucks a month and it would still be a steal. Yeah, well, I think it is $30 a month normally. Oh, I mean like, you know. Yeah. yeah, the one the one other thing that they're talking about too is that they're talking about the uh, the long-term plan on this is targeted advertising. So like what Google and Facebook and stuff do. So get people into the movie theater and then start, you know, advertising shit to them that yeah. If I'm there, I'm just ignoring whatever it is, but it's probably subliminally like getting in my subconscious and I'm still buying your shitty product. But I'm going to tell you that if I see it, I'm going to be like, I'm not going to buy that. But I'm secretly like, man, I really want some KFC. I don't even eat chicken. Well, here's the deal. It's like AMC is pissed about this, but not not the network that Breaking Bad was on. No, by the way. you have two options. You can keep your prices where they are and your movie theaters can be half empty. Or you can go with this, and you can fill the fucking theater with people going to see movies. Right. And then hopefully those people play the arcade. Hopefully those you, people <laughs> buy some popcorn. Do you want to be the next gas station? Do you want to be the next mall? Yeah. this one. Uh, hey, man. Obviously, Change AMC, the times, man. They don't listen to the Jerk of All Trades podcast. No, they if, don't. If they did, they'd be more welcoming of something new and different and innovative innovative and evolving instead of devolving into the ground where they're probably going to be in the next 25 years. Yeah, absolutely. They are not They're They're fighting against this tooth and nail. And I think that they should really be, you know, trying to change their tune because, you know, they have a limited shelf life on what they're doing right now. So technology is only going to get easier and easier um, you know, to get entertainment into your brain piece and they've got to find a way to stay relevant and they're not doing that in my opinion. Crazy. Well, speaking of innovative and new ways to do things, maybe instead of going to the movie theater, one day big blockbuster movies will be made available on porn sites. Sounds crazy, what? right? Let's we, you got to check this out, Ray X hamster is bringing TV shows to their porn site, notably Sense8. So, you know what? I've actually never heard of X Hamster. I've never been on their site before. i would never been on Pornhub before. So I figured this might be a good opportunity to check out X Hamster and see what this is about. You didn't do your research before uh, the podcast? I didn't, no. Uh, I wonder, you know, I actually wonder if this is somehow named based on Richard Gere, do you think? <laughs> Sense8? No, X hamster. X hamster. Right. Why? Because he looks like a hamster. No, you never heard the story back in the day about how Richard Gere liked to put like uh, gerbils in his butthole. What? You never <laughs> heard? Are you fucking kidding me? You never heard that? That was like <laughs> Richard Gere, the mo- actor. Oh my god, dude! He was that in w- a Pretty Woman. Yes, that was the story back in the day that he would like put tubes into his butthole and that he would like feed gerbils or hamsters into his asshole. Oh god damn it! You never heard that before. No. So this might be the ex-hamster that was uh, inside of his uh, his butthole. Ugh. But, all right, so let's check out ex-hamster. Let's see what uh, what they have to offer. Uh, tattoo, tat- tattooed country mill fucked anal POV. 
Mature lady fingering teen beauty. POV is always good. Uh, diked teen dominated by sexy MILF. Good looking Abigail Mac eats horny Kendra lusts. So yeah. they don't already have the. Wait, well, no. The Sensei is on Netflix, but they don't have the old seasons on there. They're only going to have the new season. I think they would only have the new season. Oh my God. I just found a video of the Disney princess. It's called Disney uh, Princess Disney Bitches. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the uh, this is all the Disney characters. This is Ariel currently getting uh, boned right now. Um, here's some other Disney chick getting her. Oh, here's oh polka hot polka what? Oh man, <laughs> polka hot ass. Oh my God, he is poking that hot ass. Holy! <laughs> oh man! Oh my God! Oh my God! The Beast is jerking off to a picture of beauty right now. No! Oh my God! I have to leave. Ooh, I, yeah, I can't do that. Okay, I have to leave. Uh, <laughs> my virgin eyeballs <laughs> okay so anyway so uh basically what's happening is so sensei which i actually watched one episode of and uh i thought it was just so fucking terrible i had to turn it off honestly uh it's uh created by the wachowskis who created the matrix and they also put out v for vendetta which um my uh one of my personal heroes alan moore i know wasn't very happy with the adaptation of but i still liked it i thought it was good um, but yeah, sense it's, uh, it's a show it's on Netflix and I don't know, it's got a lot of, uh, you know, lesbians and gay people and stuff on it. I noticed that the Wachowskis are, um, so the Wachowskis, they used to be guys and now they've, I don't know if they've had a full sex change or what they went exactly. full, uh, Bruce Jenner. I believe they did. Oh, interesting. Um, and they're movie directors or yeah. TV show. Uh, yeah. They directors? directed the matrix. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah, the Wach- they I, used to be the Wachowski brothers. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. So um, anyway, I just noticed that. So not that there's anything wrong with that, but Jesus, this show is really, really, really heavy handed with like the political ideology on it. And I just, I didn't really think the show was very good from what I saw, but I saw it a couple episodes and I was honestly. Oh, you've actually seen it. Yeah. I saw two episodes and I really couldn't tell you much about it. Honestly, I I saw the trailer. I watched the trailer before I got here. Yeah. So anyway, but I mean, it is, you know, it is acclaimed. A lot of, you know, a lot of people do like it, but not enough people liked it because Netflix canceled this shit and it had two seasons. So uh, the Wachowskis are basically writing like a new season of this thing, despite not having Netflix anymore to put it out. And so X Hamster, a porn site, basically said, hey, we want to put the third season out for you. (laughs) Um, Nice because you know they got the budget right they've got you know they've got more i I believe you said they've got more i or they said we have uh we have the eyeballs and we have the revenue so i mean more people are going to porn sites than any other website out there and it's the biggest thing on the internet it's the biggest thing everywhere people like their sex (laughs) it's almost ingenious like this is feast or famine either this is going to work one thousand percent and it's going to be a big big thing or it's just gonna crash and burn. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. So I don't think the Wachowskis have actually commented on this thing. Um, and X Hamster, I think at first they kind of they're spending people, all that money, nine million dollars an episode. Yeah, people thought Fuck. people thought that uh, um, you know this is kind of a joke, but they were they were actually very serious about this. They really did want to do this, um, and they're actually they've said that they're very big fans of the show. But uh, the Wachowskis haven't said anything about it. So I, I think uh, one of the articles I read about it was um, a lot of the issue of this would be getting, you know, Hollywood to join together with the porn industry, with the adult industry. Um, obviously, it would work in terms of, you know, the X hamster has the viewership and they have the money to be able to make this happen. But how do you get those two things to join together? Obviously, Hollywood as well is not, you know as progressive as they probably should be. Um, and things like Netflix and Hulu and stuff really changed the game. And are, you know, are those things becoming a little antiquated? I mean, I don't really think so. I think that this show just really wasn't, um, it really wasn't all that. It wasn't worth the amount of money that Netflix was putting into it. Well, the times are a changing and we did do a story about how millennials like small boobs compared to big boobs. That is true. So over the course except of... Except in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, except in Wisconsin. Over the course of the next 10, 15, 25 years, would the newer generations be more accepting 
of regular, not regular, I guess. Would Sense8, is Sense8 going to have like sex scenes now in it? Probably. Uh, I think that, I think that it does actually have a little bit of that. And well, they were either, kind of joking they would have more of it, but I don't way, think they, they could have go, to. Sh- they could go soft core. They could go. They could go soft core. But would the newer generations, 10, 20, 30 years from now, be accepting of mainstream television, mainstream movies on their porn sites? I think a lot of people probably would be right now. I mean, if Game of Thrones was on, you know, Pornhub or whatever, Red <laughs> Tube. I don't think that ima- they'd be able to like 2 billion illegal, <laughs> illegal views. It would I mean, be it, like wouldn't astronomical. Even, it wouldn't even be illegal though, because game of Thrones and Pornhub. That's like the tag team from hell tag team back again. Check, get a wreck it. Let's begin. Yes. So that's the Chicago Cubs uh, home run song, by the way. I hell did not yeah. know that. Uh, but yeah, I think that people would probably be accepting of it right now, but I think that is the logistics of getting Hollywood to work together with the adult industry. I think that's the biggest thing. And I also think that there would be like this stigma put on to whatever that show was. Yeah, but the stigma has gone now. The stigma is slowly devolving. I think it's, I think it's, it's I think it, I think it is eroding for sure. But I think that, you know, would the Bible belt be watching? I mean, I guess they're not watching sensate anyways, but no, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, when the 700 Club is on Pornhub, <laughs> no, yeah, well, you know, then we're, we're, I don't even know if that exists we're anymore. We're talking but. 2030, 2040. This is a long time from now. This could happen. I don't even think it's got to be that long. I mean, I think that this could be the beginning points of that happening. And I, I just think that the the logistics of getting... How crazy would it be if X Hans... X hamsters claim to fame was we used to have porn on this site, but now we just give you like, you know, your fucking yeah. curb your enthusiasm and, uh, you know, game of Thrones and all that stuff. We used yeah. to show porn here. Isn't that crazy? Now we got all your TV shows right here. Yeah. I mean, that could definitely happen. And I mean, how easy would it be for a site like that to just have like partitioned off sections and instead of just being just pornography, you know, it's, your regular shows and then you have a porn section right well here it is it's like i gotta get my my uh my crank on after that i'm feeling pretty chill crank anchors would they have crank anchors Cr- like a little crank anchor action after that i just want to watch me a little tv that's all i just want to lay in bed and watch some tv yeah yeah absolutely um so yeah i mean i could definitely see this happening i think it's just going to take a little bit more time Ooh, i, I just saw this here i know i'm going backwards here but it says x hamster reps say they get more traffic than the new york times and espn i'm not surprised i hate the new york yeah times, i'm not by the a way. big new york times guy but espn is huge my bu- let me tell you how hard up the new york times is my buddy one time i think we were probably about maybe 15 or somewhere around there and uh i had done something to make him angry and so he signed me up for a bunch of magazine subscriptions where you could just basically fill out the thing that says hey i want to sign up for this and i'll pay you later so he signed me up for a bunch of these things uh under names that i can't believe that they actually uh one of them was like ray vick my balls but that was uh, (laughs) how any company was like yeah this seems like this is a legit thing right so anyway he signed me up for the new york times uh, and also Cat Fancy <laughs> magazine as well, which now I would actually like Cat Fancy, but I didn't have cats back then. No. But he signed me up for the New York Times. The New York Times still tries to get me to resubscribe to the New York Times. Oh, geez. Dude, that's been sent for like 20 years. The New York Times has still been <sighs> trying to get me back as a subscriber. I guarantee you that X Hamster is not trying no. to find the people <laughs> that used to jerk off to their porn and get them to come back. They don't need to because they have plenty of new subscribers. And obviously the New York times is yeah, we, ball behind the times. We can file a New York times under stage five clinger for sure. 20 dude, years, super serious clinger, dude, God, the damn. worst 20 years, still trying to get me to join together with them. So yeah. Anyway, so fuck them. So uh, let me tell you what, between streaming porn and TV shows, I'm going to have to upgrade my phone so my battery doesn't die so fast. So hopefully the new iPhone X has the Jesus battery in it. I do want to say once again, this was written for me and I'm not buying the iPhone X. I'm going to ride out my (laughs) iPhone 7 for as long as I can until that motherfucker dies. So iPhone X, I'll see you later. I'm not paying $1,000 for a phone. Sorry. Yes. The Jesus battery. The Jesus battery. 
So I'm sorry say? for making you read all my shitty transitions. No, no, it's okay. I, I add my own little, they're, they're actually not shitty. They just, because they didn't come from my mind, they don't fully encapsulate what's, you know, what my views and opinions are. All right. So uh, the Jesus battery is made by Ionic Materials. Ionics innovations combine the advantages of the familiar alkaline batteries we buy at the drugstore, cheap, safe, and reliable, with those of the more expensive. Why did they have to say the drugstore? I mean, you buy them everywhere, right? Any I, anywhere I can. Anytime I need batteries, I'm just trying to get me some batteries. Anytime I need batteries, I usually don't have batteries. Amazon. You know what? Amazon. <laughs> I never bought <laughs> Give batteries me the, online. The 180 pack for uh, 15.99 or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, you'll never really, you'll I'm never look for that. batteries again. I'm like steel. I'm 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 the guy that like when I need like triple. I'll have double A batteries, but like if I need triple A batteries, I have to steal them out of something else. Oh like yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking rec- for an old clock or something. Like, yeah. do I have a clock in this? I've never owned a clock in my whole life. You're going through like the VCR remote that you haven't used. In Although my dad twenty did, years. <laughs> my dad did own like I think he had like three clocks in his room at one point. Uh, he he had my dad and we talked a little bit about my dad my dad had not even fucking with you my dad had five calendars in his room one of one of the best my uh, i real quick i know this is off this is, this is you this is know off. when you talk about your dad i don't give a fuck ray <laughs> all right on. so my so we live in Wisconsin, so we have alternate parking, right? And so my dad had I, I went into his room one day, and this was like fucking, I don't know, it was like maybe April or something. And I go into his room and I see every day on his like five calendars he's got, he's got them X'd off, and then he's got, I think it was YS, YS and TS. And I was like, or wait, no, it was uh <laughs> o, OS and TS. And I was like, what does OS and TS mean? And it was our side and their side and so he had written our side and their side on every single day i'm not even fucking with you okay so alternate parking is so they can plow the streets right it usually i think it ends maybe at the beginning of april but i think it might only go till march anyway he had written this into like august i'm looking at this thing i'm like why do you have alternate parking written until august it ends in like april oh, and uh yeah so. you can never be too safe you can never be too safe three clocks five calendars <laughs> and they all got that alternate parking up. oh my god he would kill me he would have our <laughs> side and their side our side their side ray our side their side he had he would have pictures on his wall and like so like a normal person would like set them all at the same height or try to like have something pleasing looking going on all his things would be like almost up to the ceiling like <laughs> oh they'd be staggered <laughs> no they would be staggered but then they would be lit- like literally almost all the way up to the top of the ceiling with like blank wall below that <laughs> I was like, dude, you need an interior decorator, bro. Oh, that is so funny. I miss your dad. Man. I know. He I still know. hasn't liked me on Facebook. We need we need to get my dad on the podcast. Or, uh, follow or uh, I don't know. Whatever. We're gonna get my we're gonna get my dad on the podcast. Yes. that's gonna that will be money. He is money. Up, he's up there as one of the all time must have people on the i'm on putting them on the dream the dream podcast i don't know if we can list. sign them up for Sp- uh, S- skype though I'm no we're gonna have to have them in studio that's the only way to do oh, it. that's the only way <laughs> my greatest do you the- think we're gonna be able to hold a conversation with them though? i don't know but i think it'll be entertaining as yeah. fuck my dad is not good with technology my greatest accomplishment of all times was teaching my dad how to use the recording feature on a vcr where you could set it up for a specific time so um, my girlfriend once taught my dad how to use, as he referred to it, Netflix. <laughs> like my dad would just my sit Netflix. there. I would just, I would come downstairs. So I gave him my Netflix list that I had had since like 2002. He maxed that bitch out. I was like, I didn't even know that was a possibility. <laughs> he's like, Ray, I came home from a long, a long day of work. And he's like, Ray, he's like yelling at me. Ray, I can't add more movies to Netflix. And like, I had to call Netflix or uh, sorry, Netflix customer service. I've never called customer service on anything ever possibly. And I called Netflix and it turns out that you can only have 500 movies maximum Jeez, on your list. And so only he, had, 500? he would sit there for like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, like a fo- like four straight hours, like looking through all the movies on Netflix and adding them to his list. God damn it, Ray. I can't add any more movies on my Netflix. <laughs> What's going on with my machine? <laughs> i'm saying it right now if oh he's on the God. show i got a thousand dollars that says you and him get into a massive argument it's totally it's so we, we get along a lot better than we used to but yeah. no it has to my dad has anger management issues and he brings them out of me 
<laughs> I would just wake up in the middle of the night to my dad pounding the top of his DVD player because it wouldn't be playing the burned copy of Baywatch season four that oh, I made him. Oh, man. That is so funny. Yeah, so but, I'm, but I miss funny. it. I miss it. I, I, your dad is an OG, man. Like, I'll always miss hanging out with your, not with your dad, but hanging around, hang out with, hanging out around your dad and shit. So yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, he's a trip, and we will have him on the podcast. And when we have him on the podcast, you guys will finally does your dad fully use a, understand? Yeah, does your dad use a smartphone? He has one now, but I don't think he really utilizes it all that much. He's huh. he's finally got a Facebook, but I think that his wife set it up for him. Yeah, I can tell because all the things are spelled properly. So. <laughs> My dad's not a good speller. He's actually quite a bad speller. The composition is a little off. It's like in a, a, in it's a right a, way. It's a lot off, but that's OK. Anyway, so back on to the topic he, of the Jesus battery. I was going to say, he'd be stoked to be about this Jesus battery. I didn't even got to charge my battery, right? Look at this. Yeah, he would hate when he had to get new batteries. So. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Um, So, yeah, well, this brings me back to when I was in Florida, one of my uh, buddies down there, he was like, Eddie, this is such bullshit, man. I'm like, what are you talking about? This fucking new phone. Like, yeah, it's a great phone, man. He's like, no, the battery stinks. Like, well, yeah, <laughs> they've always stunk and they probably will always stink. Yeah. He's like, why can't they just make a battery that you just charge it and then you're good for like a month? And I was like, dude, you know what? You are fucking right, man. Where's our... B- we got fucking flying cars. <laughs> we got self-driving cars. We got blowjob robots, but we can't have a fucking... We don't have it yet, but we want it. Yes, we can't have a battery in our fucking phones that charges one time for like the week or even the month. Like battery, give me a break. Batteries have definitely been something that's been forgotten in the innovation game. Like we've just been dealing with the same shitty alkaline batteries in our like normal stuff. And then we've got our lithium ion ones that, you know, occasionally set on fire and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they definitely haven't innovated in this realm in any recent time. And so this guy is basically kind of looking to combine together the lithium battery with the alkaline battery. And so kind of what he's doing is that he's removing the liquid from the lithium equation and using a plastic that's like a fire retardant inside of this battery. And so, you know, for your regular drug drugstore batteries, obviously there, those are going to you know last for fucking ever. They're going to be rechargeable and better than the regular normal shitty rechargeable ones that cost a million fucking dollars. Uh, but on a bigger scale too, I mean, you can utilize this for, you know, clean energy. Um, and so, I mean, that, I think that's probably one of the, one of the cooler concepts of this. Obviously it's going to be cool to have a battery in your phone that doesn't fucking die right away. Um, and it's not going to be in the iPhone X, but I'm just uh, saying, like, I know there's a safety issue with the longer battery, with the liquid inside the batteries. Let me make the choice. I'm not going to sue you. Just let me make the choice. I'll take the chance. If my battery lasts a week off of one charge, but it light, it might light my house on fire. That's a chance I'm willing to take. Just give me the good battery. Depends on what the battery is in. What do you mean? I mean, it depends on what item the battery is in, right? A laptop, a iPhone. A, well, I think that those a are a car. I mean, oh, the, I don't want a, a flammable battery. In well, my I mean, car. I, I think that those are those already have lithium ion batteries, which are you know, yeah. rechargeable ones, which are the ones that are prone to setting on fire. I think he wants to utilize. I think that they do want to utilize this in the lithium ion realm as well. Um, because a lot of these companies, you know, like Tesla and stuff are already investing in lithium ion, yeah. but I think he also wants to bring it into the shitty cheap alkaline batteries as well. And then utilize alkaline in a much bigger scale as well for clean energy. So I think it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty novel concept and I hope that it actually happens. Cause this guy is actually pretty innovative. He called the fact oh, that people yeah. would be walking around with, you know, mobile devices in their pockets in 25 years so like 20 years ago you're saying that yeah shit. yeah so he is definitely ahead of the game and so hopefully um this happens because i'd like a cool battery that doesn't die all the fucking well, time here you go for you crazy hackers making 250k off hbo <laughs> make a fucking battery that will last a month and you will get money. Trust me. There will be fucking companies that you pay you. You will get money. You will get money. If you can hack into these batteries or figure something out with your, with your little computers and stuff, you will get paid. You will get paid because I promise you, Elon Musk, if you can invent a battery 
that will make these cars go and go and go and go, he will pay you. So there you go. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that said, you ready for a break, Ray? Yes, let's break it up. Absolutely. Man. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. We'll be back after the break. Yep. Ah, uh, you still remember the first time you caught a glimpse of her. How could you forget? You were but a budding blossom, and her equally budding bosom called to you. You felt tingles, shivers, shakes, and blood flowing into areas that began to transform with the wafting air of her essence. Your very first crush, the local librarian. You imagine the things you would do to her, the things she would do to you. What she looked like beyond those conservative clothes that society surely forced her to wear. Yet, as the years went on, things began to change. She began to change. You began to change. And so did technology. If only there were a parallel. You want to continue to cram your head full of stories, knowledge, and whimsical fantasies but can't bring yourself to face the withering beauty that once hinted at an unknown primal urge that would consume you. Well now, you'll never have to again. Audible is a new way to read. Scratch that. Listen to your favorite and soon-to-be favorite books in audio form. Audible has over 180,000 audiobooks to choose from. Many are read by famous folks you know and love and are available to you via the free Audible app. With that many choices, you are sure to find a book you are going to love. Now, on to the good stuff. Want a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook? Well, of course you do. You'd be crazy to say no. Head your happy little fingers over to audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast to sign up for your free month and get your free audiobook, courtesy of the jerks. Thank God or the Matrix creating billionaire aliens, you'll never have to be confronted with the fleeting nature of beauty or try and figure out the clearly demonic Dewey Decimal System. Has the universe ever called out to you? Well, it's calling out to you now, and it demands you listen to the Jerk of All Trades podcast. Every Thursday night, Eddie and Ray tackled the absurdity of this world via a cornucopia of topics ranging from hot-button mainstream news, tech, robotics, progressive medicine, UFC, WWE, and so much more. Jerk of all trades, changing the world, one podcast at a time. California! Oh yeah! California! Knows knows how how to party! Oh man, we've had keep it a rocking. We've had so many fun and interesting California stories on the podcast, but this one right here might be the most progressive and game changing of them all. Taking the cake. Oh my goodness, Cal Exit or Cal Exit or however you say this damn thing yeah. is freaking crazy, Ray. It's like a playoff of the Brexit thing, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically, a new ballot initiative has been submitted for a federal convention that could lead to California's independence from the United States. This is this is definitely definitely interesting. Um, yeah, wow. I mean, what a precedent this would set if California just like broke off, right? It became its own country became its own thing it has its own laws it has its own like you know con- i guess they could rewrite their own constitution yeah, yeah they could they could start all over again they, they you know not 1492 but 1776 it'd be 1492 17, it'd be 1776 California. all over again goddamn you know it. how to party too yeah so it's like we got a lot i know we got a lot of friends and fans out in california that listen to the podcast what up, what up? i would love to get their take on this <clears throat> Because uh, there there have been talks about Illinois breaking off into separate states. 
because of the massive, massive, massive amount of debt that they have that they just can't pay off <laughs> anytime soon. Let's get rid of them. Uh, yeah, let's just subsidize them into four different states. Let's just give a piece to Wisconsin, a piece to Indiana, a piece to you know uh, Indiana. I mean, I guess we want our, the piece uh, with Chicago, uh, right? We yeah, we would get the piece with Chicago. Yeah, of course. yeah. Don't try but, to take that from us. No, well, we're the closest, so. Yeah, but uh, yeah, California breaking away into its own country. It still needs a title and a summary from the Attorney State General, and it needs to be submitted to Congress before it can go on to the twenty eighteen the final frontier. Oh, sorry, that was my that was my title for it. <laughs> the ballot. Uh, your your timing is just a little off on that. Oh, that's, <laughs> I had to. My brain had to like process the X hamster inside of my brain was traveling around. Yeah, but after it goes on the 2018 the ballot, it needs uh, 600,000 signed petitions within six months. And then after that, it has to go to Congress, and two-thirds of Congress has to vote on it, and it has to be amended. So it's Oh, my God, it, it's, dude. It's i got to take a unlikely. nap just from hearing all those things that have to happen. Yeah, well, you don't, you're not a big fan of Congress? No, 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 it was just like a lot of things, and my brain started to shut off there. So Yeah, well, you try to do big things. It Ra- requires a lot of Ra- effort. Ralphus is actually being kind of wily right now, too. So, so. Ralphus? Yeah, Ralphus. That's the name of the hamster that I keep inside of my uh, my anus. Oh, it- oh, wait, wait. I didn't actually, I didn't verbalize that on the podcast, did I? Does he do security for you too? <laughs> yeah, he wears a little uh, half cut shirt. <laughs> Is he missing some teeth? He's a hamster. He only has like two teeth in the front, right? <laughs> well, actually, I think that a hamster is the reverse of Ralphus, right? Because a hamster has two teeth in the front, and Ralphus didn't have two teeth in the front. Yeah. Um, I think I may have to Photoshop Ralphus with a hamster head. That that's on the agenda. Okay. All right. Continuing on. Yeah, so uh, this is the third time that uh, the people in California have attempted this. Uh, super interesting. I don't know if I'm a big fan of this. Uh, it, it would have to pan out over the, the course of time for me to analyze it. <clears throat> but it's certainly very interesting. So what's their, what's their big goal with this? Like they just, they feel like their values are so at odds with what's happening now with our commander and she's that they want to break off because of that? Or was this something that was already happening before they've tried this? Uh, well, it's happened, I think like 50 or a hundred times since like the early 1900s. Okay. So it's happened quite a few times. So it's, it's, it's ha- never but recently it's only been like three times since they've tried and more and more people have gotten on board since Trump got elected in, right. no, in November because they can't move to uh, to Canada. So well, you know, like, fuck it, let's California, make our own Canada. They got their own marijuana city, so yeah, that's might, true. As well, might as well just make their own United States California Republic or N- not United, United States, States of marijuana. So they get California. to make they make their own taxes, their own laws, their own. I guess they would have to have border patrol, their own security because. Similar to Canada, where they have customs when you try to get into Canada, you, yeah. you just can't walk up in California anymore. It'd be like a thing to go to California. Let's build a wall around California, and who is going to build it? The governor. Nevada. Mm. I don't know. So. Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. I mean, I would once again guess that it would probably end up being Mexicans, right? So we all know Arnold <laughs> Schwarzenegger hates Donald Trump. Yes. Has he been working on this the whole entire time? The governor. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is so crazy. This is where I wish that we both had awesome impression skills and we could have Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, talking to Donald Trump about this. But Man, so let's just that pretend huge. Let's just pretend that, you know, so if Calif- get to the chopper, if California succeeds with this, who will be the next state to do it? Probably Texas, yeah. Florida, yeah, Texas. Yeah. Not Wisconsin. All my exes live in Texas. Well, Florida, you got a lot of the. Just kidding. Actually, all your all your exes might live in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All your exes live in Texas. Uh, none of my exes live in Texas. Is that why you like big boobs? Because they all have big boobs down there. Because everything Texas? is bigger in Texas. Yeah. yeah. I like big butts, and I cannot lie. Well, like hopefully, everything works lie. out. You know, California exit. Uh, maybe in four years. They'll be their own independent 
little country out there in California. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. Can't tell them shit about marijuana after that with yeah. their fucking legalized marijuana and shit. I mean, I think do whatever the fuck yeah. they want. I mean, I think that's going to happen anyway. But yeah, anyway, even more so, they're untouchable at that point. Yeah, they they might be untouchable. So, uh, if there uh, if there is one state that ain't seceding, it is without a doubt motherfucking Michigan. So for Christ's sakes, Detroit filed for bankruptcy. These motherfuckers cannot afford to put the ballot out there for that to happen. So uh, they do, uh, however, have a musical moneymaker, and I'm not talking about that hack Kid Rock. Yeah, I saw your video on the stage. I get it. It's character. You're a joke. Anyway, uh, but I'm instead referring to... We can to- uh, file Kid Rock under not coming on the podcast anytime soon. <laughs> he wasn't coming on the podcast, nor do I really want him oh, on the podcast anyway. So I don't want to give him more airtime than I just gave him right now. But uh, anyway, I'm referring to a couple of painted clowns named the insane clown posse. So I know we've talked about them a little bit and you know, Hey, I'm not, uh, I'm not the biggest, uh, juggalo out there or, or a juggalo at all, but well, you've been to a, a juggalo concert. Yeah. Should I tell that story again, Eddie? Please no. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they've been in the news. I got a quick two minute story for you, Eddie. Seven minutes later, <laughs> Eddie has got a quick recap of the most recent UFC proceedings. So, and where I nailed all the picks, silence deafening, deafening. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the Juggalos are in the news of late. ICP is in the news. Let's talk about the Juggalo March in DC, the anti Trump uh rally by the Juggalos. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Washington, DC, in front of the Lincoln Memorial. About 1,500 Juggalos staged an all-day rally in concert to protest what they say is class-based discrimination by law enforcement. Hating on the clowns, and after it is in the news, everybody loves clowns again, and they don't love the Juggalos still. So they had 1,500 Juggalos, and I'm sure there were some Juggalettes there as well. Uh, They staged an all-day rally in concert to protest uh, what Eddie just said, which is basically uh, the Juggalos were basically named by the FBI as a gang, and so they're not happy with that. And I think they also really, really hate Trump. So, which A lot of people hate Trump. Yeah, so the Juggalos and uh, the ICP are not uh, fans of the Trump administration, so... Um, there was a Trump rally there as well, and so the Juggalos staged this anti one, uh, which was also a concert. Which I also did notice that you actually had to pay to get into this thing. Did you notice that? No, I didn't care. Yeah, so I wasn't going. Yeah, so well, I'm, that's that wasn't even my point. My point was just like they made a big deal about this, and they also made some money off of it too. So of course, but, I mean, you know, I guess they, it's not too surprising. Yeah. Uh, Eddie's got listed here that one demonstrator held. When was up the last s- time ICP did anything for free? Um, tried to explain how magnets worked unsuccessfully. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they do things for free all the time. I'm sure they take a shit for free, right? I don't know. I mean, we were still waiting for the black juggalo to come on the show, and that never happened. So, and I'm, I don't know. I'm looking at the pictures. I'm not seeing any black juggalos. The Justice there. Department's gang task force <laughs> labels juggalos as a loosely organized hybrid gang. I've been to a JCW wrestling event. Not to an ICP show, though, like me. And I will say, not completely off. Not completely off. They, yeah. they are. Uh, it is loosely organized, and they are of all of a uh, similar mindset. <laughs> Much like a juggalo's vagina, it's, it's or ca- sorry, a juggalette's vagina. It's kind of like the hive mind, loosely organized, where you get similar people with similar ideas together, and they all collectively think as one. But uh, I wouldn't call uh, right. the Department of Justice <laughs> for some juggalos. But that's I mean, just me. right? But I mean, this is like saying that the Kiss Army is like an actual military. <laughs> organization like it's just people that all like this music and like you know it means a lot to them whatever like i'm not a fan of it but i mean they're clearly not (laughs) they're not a fucking cult they're not a gang i mean they're just people that really you know they're harmless yeah they're they're, harmless folks they're they're relatively harmless folks so they like to uh, paint their faces so one demonstrator held up a sign that said judge me not by the color of my face paint. Right. 
which is actually white and black usually. So uh, this guy's got a sign that says the FBI listens to Nickelback. He misspelled nickel though. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> oh, it yeah. just reminds me of that video you showed me with that battle rap guy. Oh, Joe, Joe goes. Yeah. Where he won the, uh... <laughs> oh man, drag nets. How do they work? Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie is also wondering if Donald Trump faced off against the great Malenko, ha 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 ha, uh, who would win in a new, no DQ hardcore match. So I think for sure Donald Trump would win, right? The great Malenko, the great Malenko. He, he had a thousand holds, but he wasn't really good in a hardcore match. Oh, that's the wrong Malenko. Is that uh, his dad? Uh, wh- what are they in age? Uh, well, yeah, the great Malenko is D Malenko's dad. Was it actually? Is that true? Yeah. Oh. Well, his name wasn't the Great Malenko, but their album is based off of uh, D. Malenko's father. Is who, it really? Whose name escapes me at the moment right now. But uh, I would probably go with Simon? Malenko. I don't know. I would go with Malenko on this one. Uh, no DQ means he doesn't have to break the hold if Trump gets the yeah. ropes. Puts him in the the, uh, the Texas clover leaf. Yeah, you can put him in anything he wants, probably. Uh, Trump, though. He's got the security. He's got the body. That's what I was thinking. You know, he's got Secret Service, but you know, huge. I got. I, got, I think I got to go Malenko on this one. I'm gonna go for uh, on a straight up one on one, no holds barred, uh, hardcore match. Who would win? Donald Trump versus the ghost of Chris Benoit. The ghost? I don't think I've ever seen a ghost win a fight. Yeah. Well, we haven't watched. Enough I gotta movies. go with Trump on that one. All right. I guess I'll agree with you. So, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, one other thing I wanted to cover on this real quickly, too, that I thought was interesting was uh, I read an interesting article about the Fago company. So maybe this would be a good time for me to tell my Juggalo story again about going to the maybe. No, no. Uh, anyway, I'm meditating right now. Oh, you're meditating. OK, I think we're doing a podcast, though. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, Fago was uh, actually started by uh, Jewish immigrants. Um, back in the, I think it was like the early 1900s. I could possibly be making that up. No, sorry. Uh, 1907, they began their bottling uh, business and they were flavoring soda water and then they were making uh, frosting flavors. Uh, so anyway, um, it's like kind of an interesting thing that uh, you've got this Jewish company who've kind of, they've kept their distance from the insane clown posse, but they definitely have seen a huge, huge amount of um, money influx into their company because of the insane clown posse. You know, the amount of dude, I, the concert I went to, they had probably 10 pallets of the shit. They were shooting all over the, uh, the crowd jizzing all over them with their, uh, their soda and such. So, uh, but you know, this is kind of interesting that uh, Fago, you know, and the insane clown posse kind of have more in common than, uh, than you might, think so i'm surprised to hear they started up in 07 yeah 1907 man craziness i know over a hundred years of terrible knockoff soda they're from uh michigan too yeah they're uh yeah they're based out of detroit that's crazy yeah i wonder i actually wonder so uh so yeah so fago i'm sure most people know what it is but anyway it's like you know it's a regional soda we have it here as well um, and it's just kind of like a knockoff brand soda, but I'm, I would be interested to know like how much of an impact the insane clown posse had on Fago, like how much, like would the Fago brand be hurting had it not been for the insane clown posse? That's a good question. That's uh, that's, I like, certainly never heard of I, it before that. Yeah. I mean, I saw it was in the store. I, I don't really know though if I saw it in the store before I heard about it from the insane clown posse or not. I'm sure I probably just like, you know, just didn't pay attention to it. Cause you know, I wasn't that poor where I had to buy knockoff soda anyway. So, uh, <laughs> I remember the first knockoff soda I remember seeing was at quick trip, but it wasn't Fago. It was like some other shit. Yeah. I used to remember my dad used to buy some of the knockoff sodas. Like he would get the little cardboard thing. Then you would like put your sodas like in, you know, you'd pick out whatever. The cool thing about that soda was that you could like do a mix and match. So like you didn't have to just get like a 12 pack of Coke. You could basically like Uh, you wanted like Mountain Dew and Coke and what, but not those, you know, you wanted the knockoff version of them. You could basically pick your, you know, it's like build your own six pack thing, which we know that Eddie is not really uh, 
all that up to snuff on the build your own six no. pack. When we had the beer episode, he told him to build his own six pack. And uh, yeah, he actually. I built my own 48 pack. Right. He, <laughs> he brought six six packs. So. Or 36 pack. Yeah. I wonder how the juggalos feel about universal basic income because the homie Richard Branson has recently spoke out about it. And I have a feeling Ray likes what he has to say. I believe that I do. I like it a lot. So I'm willing to put some money on the fact that the Juggalos like the idea as much as I do because yeah, I'm, I think that was inferring that they're poor. So that, oh, God. That was kind of shitty, but... You Richard know. Branson's anyway. changing the game. Uh, Richard Branson recently praised the idea specifically of self-esteem that comes from not having to worry about the baseline amount of money Needed for imagine life's essentials. That. Imagine that. This is similar to what we talked about before. Uh, he expresses a hope that giving people this leg up allow them to utilize their own creativity and entrepreneurial spirit to carve out a better life for themselves. Interesting. If I had free time instead of having to go somewhere for 40 hours a week to, you know, be able to eat and have a roof over my head, if I, you know, could utilize that time for something of my own. Instead of having to do that in my very little free time that I have. Yeah, well, it's more than 40 hours when you take into account the overtime, the and time. The driving. The driving, the time you spend getting ready. And then you come home drive and home. you want to kill yourself because, oh, wait. <laughs> you know, it's. it's yeah, a, no, it's definitely. Sometimes yeah. you get a phone call in the middle of the night. You have to fucking fix a problem that you have nothing to do with. You got to get ready for work and then you have to, you know. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, obviously it's a lot more than 40 hours. And so you spend a lot of, you don't really get a ton of free time, unfortunately. And so if you had that free time to be able to utilize for, you know, something of your own accord, and we've talked about this before, you know, would everybody use it to, you know, to their advantage, you know, probably not, but I think more people than not would probably use it in a good way. Um, and the other big thing is once automation comes, what is the alternative? Like, what do we do? Like, not everybody's fixing the fucking robots. So what do we do? How do we keep those people afloat and not, how do we prevent them from, you know, slipping through the cracks? Well, maybe if those fucking hackers had universal basic income, they would have to hack HBO for that 250 K. Yeah. They might actually have more time to hack yeah. though. <laughs> maybe I could learn how to hack if I had more. Yeah. Free time. No kidding. Right. Give me that universal basic income so I can milk some of these fucking companies out of that. Uh, Game of Thrones money. Milking, milking, milking. So, yeah, uh, he's not the only one, though. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg recently talked about being a big fan of it. Elon Musk is also a fan of it. So, um, yeah, I think that it's uh, it's a cool thing. And uh, they kind of talk about, too, how he wants to have that. So, it, you know, it's kind of a continuation of, like, unemployment. You know, so, like, you're on unemployment or whatever, and then... You know, you have to meet all this criteria and so, so you can continue to get that. And so you end up with a really shitty, low paying job that you have to go to and you have all that stress and all the other bullshit that we talked about, but you got a low paying job too. So you're spending all your time there. You're stressed out because of that. And that's what you're utilizing to be able to, you know, pay your bills, feed your family, keep a roof over your head. So he wants to continue to give that amount of people to, you know, even people that have a job. So and I think the big thing with this is obviously, I mean, people that are well beyond my realm of, you know, would have to break down exactly where this money is coming from. But it looks like, I mean, it's basically going to be redistributed from other sources. Like, it's not like, you know, you're getting taxed more for this. We're just redistributing this. Uh, they were talking about all the money that is going to be um, saved from all these companies from automation because i mean let's be honest here once the robots take over the robots obviously it's a one-time investment you know hey maybe you have to fix the robot whatever but then that's the end of it now you don't have to pay someone and give them benefits and all that and so instead of these companies just taking all of this um, additional money and just having additional profits like what if we could sort of redistribute some of that and i know some, you know obviously not everyone's going to be keen on that because socialism whatever but um, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a good idea, and it keeps people afloat, and it keeps people not as stressed, and it helps with mental health in our country, which is obviously a huge, huge, huge fucking issue, um, and drug abuse, and alcohol abuse, and I mean, so on and so forth, so many, so many things that are rooted out of you know these problems. So I 
I like it. I've talked about how much I like it. And so that's why the transition was uh, what it was. I like it a lot. <laughs> so uh, anything else you wanted to say on this, Eddie? Uh, universal basic income is interesting. It's still kind of early for me to have an opinion on it quite yet. Don't have enough results from the other countries that have tried it. But it's I think an, there's it, actually a lot of results, though. Okay, what are they? Um, hold on. It's like <laughs> right in the art. It's oh, okay. like right in the article from. Uh, I haven't Sweden. read the results yet, but fin, uh, uh, Finland here, uh, Canada started using it. We talked about it in the podcast like yeah, multiple times. They've only been doing it for like one or two years. It's it hasn't even been like a very long time. The sample size is very small. We'll, we'll come it, back. We'll come the sample back. size for universal basic income is extremely small. If I can get it on a much grander scale over a elongated period of time where I can analyze data on the results, that'd be great. But until then, I don't have an opinion on it. And I can't say whether it's a great thing, a good thing, a bad thing, or a very bad thing. It's hard uh, to say. They're utilizing it in Kenya. Um, I'll send, I'll send, I'll send you all this. I believe we actually talked about this too. It was actually used. Kenya? Yes. In Kenya. I don't think we talked about Kenya. But Pretty sure we did. Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, whatever. You're not paying attention. You're not paying attention I, to our podcast. I'm listening. Anyway, I'm not universal gonna... basic income. Ray loves it, but it's still early. Way too early. Okay. So what, what is the fix then, Eddie? Get a job. <laughs> Go to work. <laughs> Get a job. Go to Do work. something with yourself instead of playing PlayStation all day. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't you not have a job? Who the fuck are you talking to? Yeah, but I got money. Yeah, you do have money. So, And I have a job and I don't have money. So what the fuck am I doing wrong? <laughs> Just give me free money, please, please, please. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, while we wait for the government to give us free uh, free something for nothing, our friend Eddie the Jerk is going to give you some free stuff, and that is social freaking media. So, Eddie, why don't you hit him with it? Yes, indeed. Uh, you know, we are live all day, every day. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a comment. Give us a subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Uh, and also if you can listen to the podcast, give us a review, tell us what you think. Good, bad, or indifferent, you know, just let us know what you think and then, uh, subscribe to us on Twitch. Uh, it's been a while since we've been on Twitch, but we're looking to get back on there. We might be back on there this week sometime playing a little Jackbox, having a little fun. These Jackbox parties get crazy. Uh, if you want to know what we're talking about, just take a look at our Instagram pictures and you can see that, uh, Ray the Jerk is proficient in the Jackbox Drawful game. I'm pretty good. And uh, he, when they give me motorboating, yeah, he kills it with with the uh, with his phone there. So <clears throat> make sure you subscribe because if you don't subscribe, you're gonna miss it. And then the official website of the Jerk of All Trades podcast is joatpodcast.com. That's you can the one. Listen to all the episodes there. All of our friends listen to that. Go to joatpodcast.com and listen to the episodes there. It's the best place to listen to it. Yeah, you know, iTunes is nice, but not everybody has a freaking uh, Apple phone. So that is that. And then for any questions, comments, or things that you might want to talk about, jerk of all trades podcast at gmail.com. We are here for you. And we will be here for you once we come back from the break. Yes, let's hear Eddie give you some more free stuff in our Audible trial. So we'll be back. Hey, what's up, guys? Eddie the Jerk here from the Jerk of All Trades podcast. And thank you for hanging out with us. As you guys already know, I've been on this Audible for a while now, and I'm totally digging it. When you use the link audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast, you get a free audiobook when you sign up a free audiobook every 30 days thereafter, and discounted audiobook pricing as an Audible member. If you already have an Amazon account, it's so easy to sign up. It literally took me like 10 seconds to set everything up. My audiobook of choice this month is Game of Thrones, A Song of Fire and Ice, book number one. If you haven't seen the show, no big deal. Go ahead and get caught up with this audiobook. And for you fans of Game of Thrones... You already know what time it is. You're going to love this audiobook. Once again, the link is audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. 
Go start up your Audible subscription like a king with Audible and the Jerks. If you like stand-up comedy, sports, entertainment, interviews with guests, things you talk about with your boys in the Man Cave, then tune into the Man Cave Chronicles podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, and Pocket Cast. All right, guys, we are back. And as fans of the JOAT podcast, you guys know we aren't afraid to delve into the what-ifs and the what could be in this crazy, mad world. And we have found another gem. So what if people could be controlled by somebody holding a remote? And I think the other question to that is, what kind of batteries does it have in it? Because what if the remote had shitty old school alkaline batteries It died? Then you'd be fucked. So That'd be crazy. So anyway, remote controlled humans. Let's fucking talk about it. So. Yeah, who needs robots when you have remote control humans? Yeah, I mean, you can basically turn humans into your own personal robot, right? Until they die, yeah. There's a lot, a lot of implications <laughs> of this thing, so. Yeah, there's a physics pr- professor out at the University of Buffalo at the College of Arts and Sciences. Arnd Prawl. Yeah, he's a jabroni. No, Not, really. Not really. Not <laughs> really. I mean, he focused on a technique called ma- magnetothermal stimulation. I don't even know what the fuck that means. So this guy has an entire technique based around it. So yeah, it requires the implement implantation of specially built DNA strands and nanoparticles, which attach to specific neurons in your brain. But once the minimally invasive procedure is over, the brain doesn't sound that minimally yeah, invasive. Know, that's what no they shit, tell. Right? That's what they tell you before you sign up for. This it. is like, like reading an infomercial. Totally minimally, minimally in- invasive. Like it's not even a big deal. No big deal. So once that then minimally invasive procedure is over with, the brain can be remotely controlled via an alternating magnetic field. When those magnetic inputs are applied, the particles heat up causing the neurons to fire. So basically your brain starts working without you deciding your brain (laughs) is starting to work. Somebody else chooses that your brain is starting to work and make you uh, do things that you weren't prepared to do. Literally fucking terrifying, right? I mean, this is kind of actually, this is just a thought. This is almost like uh, hypnosis sort of, right? But like, it's like, you know, like new school hypnosis, except it could really be utilized in really terrifying fashion. I feel like so. it's hard to say, but uh, this has been done on animals already. Researchers were able to control the movement of mice, causing them Always to with freeze, the mice, lock up, or I'm sorry, lock up their limbs. <laughs> they made them <laughs> pop and lock. And they even made run. <laughs> they made the mice pop and lock. They made them drop it pop, like it's lock hot. And drop it. <laughs> they made them drop it like oh, it's hot. They, they got mice twerking. Fucking, they got mice twerking fucking, in the Hey, lab. you stay away from my hamster, <laughs> goddammit. You better not do anything to Ralphus, okay? You leave him alone. Well, you better keep him away from the University of Buffalo. Uh, he's not going anywhere near from there. Mr. Arnd uh, Parali. He might Staying have a, right where he is. He might have a hamster fetish like yeah. your boy uh, Richard Gere. Yeah, yeah. Gerbil. I don't know. I don't remember if it was a gerbil or hamster, but I don't know. Anyway. The holy grail for dreamers like Elon Musk is that one day we'll be able to tweak our brains to eliminate mood disorders. And make us more perfect creatures. I am totally down for this. Totally down for it. You want to go ahead and remote control my shit to make me better than I actually already am? Go ahead and try it. I like to see it. <laughs> and, I, I, and I would like to do it. Okay, my, mind you. Okay, let's keep, let's keep this in mind. Eddie... Totally undecided on universal basic income, but totally down to let some minimally invasive mag- magnetothermal stimulation surgery happen on his brain so somebody else can control his brain, his movements, his limbs. He's totally cool with that. So oh, for sure. Keep that in mind at all times. Keep so. it in mind. I'm progressive. <laughs> uh, I feel For myself, though, not for everybody yeah, else. Yeah, I feel like I'm not sold on this one yet. <laughs> like I'm going to have I'm going to have to see a little bit more longer term research on this one before I'm letting them turn me into a pop locker, which I can't do that now. I don't know if that's actually a term. Dude, what if they could make you like super efficient, super smart, just like Uber, like just uh driven, just making you the 
best possible human being that you could possibly be. Like it would eliminate all the bullshit and just make you the most proficient person that you could possibly be. I think I would be down for that. I mean, that that's an interesting now, thing I'm not though. Saying at what that point works. are you no longer you? At what point, you know, it doesn't matter. I sign my name. Will, away. Right? If I sign my name away, I sign my name away. Uh, I'm not, I'm not saying this is great for other people. I wouldn't sign other people up for this, but for myself personally, if I decide to choose this, I think I should have the choice. Oh, I'm I'm certainly not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying for me That's personally. That's the difference between universal basic income and this stuff. You're saying I'm against universal basic income because da 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 da. I don't think I I don't think I said. But that. I'm okay. <laughs> listen for to how sh- listen to how shitty you made me sound in that in this scenario. No, I'm just trying to okay. sum it up because we're already at hour twenty. Um, it, it's an individual thing where universal basic income is more of a societal thing. For, where millions of people will be affected when this is something where I will individually be affected. Right. But you have to consider that the people that are utilizing this, that are doing this could use this for, you know, unscrupulous things as well. Right. That's a chance I take. Right. You're you're getting, (laughs) you're getting, you're getting raped. Sorry. That's what I've been thinking. Or I'm raping somebody else. What do I do when the judge says you're going to jail for life when I didn't mean to rape somebody that I accidentally raped? You know what you do. God damn it. I had the nanoparticles in my neurons. You call your goddamn robot lawyer, dude. Come on. (laughs) I don't know if the robot lawyer is ready for this. How do we word this shit? Uh, Um, University of Buffalo. Thermomagnetically, Sci- <laughs> scientists took that would be like the black market of my body. Black market, fucking, uh, and made what me is this called? rape. This doesn't even have a name yet. Some one, okay. All right, scientists took control of my body. I already have an idea of what my uh alibi would be brain. As long as I keep my documents, I should be fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, Here's how I can help. Need extra help. We can help you within yeah. 24 hours. Basically, I'm going to keep all my documents, and the company that I sign with is going to be uh, responsible for any. Hold on uh, to your receipt. Uh-oh. <laughs> hold on to your receipt. That's it. No, I'm telling you, you should hold on to your receipt. Okay. So yeah, basically, if you see Eddie the Jerk being a uh, nanoparticle thermomagnetically, uh, hide your assholes because you might get raped. <laughs> hide your kids, hide your wife, because hide your assholes. You never know when the you about to get raped. Black market fucking uh, you know University of Buffalo Arn Paul guys are gonna fucking use this shit for evil and not for good. Right. I mean, well, and let's hope that they're gonna use it for good, but you know. It's hard to not think of. I've seen a lot of science fiction and horror movies in my life, and so this this is the beginning of that movie. You know, this is what the setup could, of the movie. What if they could use this to make police officers better? And like, uh, I mean, they already you know. they already have cameras on them, and they do things like uh, attack fucking and arrest nurses who refuse to take blood samples illegally. That's what I'm uh, saying. They, what they, if they could make them? They better tell white ladies, that? "Don't worry, I only kill black people," even though they know they're being recorded or they have a fucking camera on them. So, yeah. so this procedure would eliminate all that. Not really, because it's all about the people that are behind it. It's all the people that are controlling it. It's just a different person controlling. This implies that the person that's controlling it has uh, has better Good or intentions. more upstanding morals than the person who they're controlling, right? Yeah. And that's what do they have worse? What do they have worse? Good. If they have worse, then we're all fucked. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're that's, all fucked. But if they have that's good what intentions, I want to see more. they could make police officers better, stop killing people, and stop doing shady shit. You know, they can just, uh, they could cut all, they can trim the fat and make people better as a human race. That would, which be, would cool. be crazy. Super crazy. I mean, you want to talk about people inventing stuff and creating like uh, super uh, progressive ideals. Uh, this could be the first step, but it, it is, it is scary. But uh, like I said, I'm down for it. So uh, yeah, I'm not signing up for it yet. I'd like to see a little bit more research on it, but if it make, makes it so that I can make more money, I'm all about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 
all about it. I'm sure it's going to be expensive. So anyway. All right. Well, the scientists holding the remote control to my brain are telling me it's time to go to the J O A T video corner. Uh, Ray, what do we got this week? Uh, we got some fun shit. So, um, this first one, I believe, um, this is, this is for me. I actually picked this out. So, but I should probably pretend that Eddie picked it out, but, um, let's, uh, this is stem cells can be used to cure baldness. So let's, uh, let's check this bad boy out. All right. Are you, uh, are you up there? Yep. All right. Ready? Are you going to play the audio? I mean, in the background. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, stem cells could be the key to curing baldness for good. Yay. Uh, biotech startup has raised $300 million to prove it. Here's a guy. He's combing his mm. balding hair. Uh, use stem cells uh, to manipulate the... Or Sorry, uh, that was moving too fast for me. Uh, body uses to regenerate and repair different organs. Now they're going to use them for your hair. As we age, the proteins that direct these stem cells get imbalanced. There's an old guy looking out a window. Here's a scientist doing sciencey things and stuff. She's curing baldness right now, I believe. Here's a guy talking that I can't hear <laughs> for some reason. Oh, there's there the sh- it is. There's the shitty music. This makes me feel calm. Yeah. Um, they saw a 10% increase in hair growth. I'm down for that. Yeah. They're entering phase three trials pretty soon here. This looks Now, is this only for your head or is this for like, I mean, if you, (laughs) who is balding, who is balding? Like, like I'm like, I have male pattern baldness on my pubes. Yeah. Like say hypothetically your pubes got lit on fire (laughs) and the hair doesn't grow back. (laughs) Oh man. Could you use stem cell treatment on your pubes to get your pubes back? Because <laughs> that would be. Did nuts. we just did we just find out that Eddie lost his pubes <laughs> in a freak fire accident? There's at, only one way to find out. There's only one I way to find out. I don't know how bad out. you want to see. <laughs> it's going on to the Instagram. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. All right. So yeah. So uh, there's that one. Uh, this one I'm actually super pumped. I've only whoa, seen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can talk about that for a second. Oh yeah. Stem cell treatment is very cool. Uh, I'm all about stem cell treatment. Uh, you can use it. For, uh, they're actually talking about using it for macular degeneration, which is something my grandfather has, but he's not willing to, uh, you know, go with the process, unfortunately. But uh, a lot of athletes use it for injuries to their back, to their knees, to their uh, necks. And uh, United States. And their pussies and their cracks. Yeah. The United States hasn't fully come around to it, but they're slowly coming around to stem cell treatment. But uh, other countries such as Germany are really big into stem cell treatment. So looking forward to seeing what other stuff, new stuff like the baldness uh, treatment will be coming forward with stem cells. This is similar to the, uh, you know, remote control humans where if we can make people better, let's just go ahead and do it. Like why fuck around? Yeah. I mean, as a bald man, myself, as a, uh, a future resident of bald head Island uh, or a current resident of bald head Island figuratively or not figuratively. Um, yeah. I mean, if it was easy to do, Maybe, you know, if I could just take like one pill once and then like I would be cured, then it'd be one thing. But so there's going to be a whole fucking thing and you got to go like, I'm not, I'm not interested in doing all that. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's cool. I would like to have long flowing, uh, Fabio like locks again, but Raven like hair. Not, not these days, but oh, Raven had some good hair though. He did. He back in the day. He had some, he had some big hair. So shout out to the Raven effect podcast. Yeah. Yeah. What up? Uh, so yeah, um, you know, maybe one day I won't be bald. We'll see. So maybe I'll just grow my skull it out. Never know. All right. So uh, next video here, uh, I actually saw, so we kind of send the videos to each other, but we don't actually, um, we don't watch them until onto the podcast. And so I actually saw the, just the name of this thing. And I saw like one second of it as I favorited it and I was LOLing to myself. So I'm pretty excited to watch this. This is a uh, Lowe's, which is a former employer of mine is giving its workers 
Iron Man suits to carry lumber around. Oh my god! So, right, let's see what the fuck this thing looks like. Let's play this thing. Oh my goodness! Oh okay, my so god! You got one guy not using it. Oh my god! Look at his back. It's from Virginia Tech. It's a cyborg. It's like a weird apparatus that goes around your back. See, this is what I'm saying. You get this apparatus that helps you lift all this heavy shit, and then you get the it's bra- a wearable exosuit. You get the, you get the brain uh, remote control, and you got these motherfuckers at Lowe's just doing work <laughs> all day long. This is just absolutely, absolutely fucking insane. Like, I mean, I get it, sort of, but no one's going to want to wear this motherfucking thing. I'm telling you, it is absolutely ludicrous. So once their back goes out, they fucking have to wear it. It is so fucking ludicrous looking. Um, it's This is the one of our first topics. We talked about fucking Lowe's and their goddamn uh, the Lowbot. And yeah. it's like, okay, so I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. I mean, I think that, you know... It's, it's a novel concept, but first off, like seeing like in the environment, like people are not going to want to wear this fucking thing. It looks absolutely ludicrous. And number two, like you guys are fucking way more shit up and you're investing in the wrong things, dude. <laughs> like, I would laugh so hard if I saw some guy in his lunch break wearing this thing. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> like, God damn. <laughs> like, I feel like an idiot. Like I drive power equipment and like I, I drive a, uh, like a, what's called the order picker. And like, there's like a harness thing on it. And like, I have to get off of the thing. Cause it like prevents you from whatever falling and, you know, falling to your death. And uh, if I get off the thing and I'm wearing that goddamn harness, like I feel like a fucking idiot. So I'm definitely not wearing a fucking exosuit while I'm at work. Like I'm just going to hurt my back like normal people do. So anyway, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I hurt my back at work the other day, but yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a real man. So I just tough it out. So there you go. Anyway. Yeah. That thing is uh, absolutely ludicrous. So, but good, good going Lowe's. Good going. All right. All right, next one we got. Uh, this is the uh, the transforming chair. Yes, the transformer chair. Okay, let's check All this. Right, three, two, one. Um, it looks a little small for me. Yeah, but it's highly adaptable. It's made of squishy, a squishy forest. It's like weird little triangular foam it, things. Yeah, it's, it's like rectangular. Uh, foam pieces. There's was that sixteen of them in a square container. Yeah, they're stems. Are they made of stem cells? Oh ah! man! And they're all squishy and fucking comfortable, and you can jump on it and fucking like. It's like a goddamn. Oh, you can use your laptop. It's like oh, a beanbag chair. You can bag sleep chair. in it. Yeah, it's like, and like some of them stretch out, and some of them squish like really like. Squishy. It's eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's too small. I for could fucking make bucks. this thing for so much less than that. Dude, okay. What was wrong with regular chairs? <laughs> they weren't squishy. Like those ones, right? I mean, my my couch is like <laughs> sort of squishy. I just got to look at this ET thing. It's oh, fucking hilarious. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay. You're not supposed to be on ET I know, yet. but I X'd out the window, and that was the next window. Don't that came go out. there yet. All right, so ne- all right, so we got next one. Then now uh, this is on my videos. Um, this is the first video. Uh, these are uh, these are the Pizza Hut uh, shoes. All right. Uh, it's they look like Reebok pumps. Yeah, they look like pumps. Uh, they're uh, they're shoes. Oh, they're high tops. And- they're high tops. They're white and red. Yeah. You got a turntable. You got the mix. No, I don't see a mixer there, but they got turntables. You scan the code. Wait. No, no. That's this is former innovations that they had. Uh, they had the turntable pizza box. Uh, this now you press a press a little thing like the pump thing. It's the Pizza Hut logo, and then it sends. Uh, oh my god! Like it, a Bluetooth message. Yeah, it sends out to the app, and uh, you get your Pizza Hut pizza. So you just have to wear these goddamn ridiculous looking sneakers to get it man i mean this is i mean this is ludicrous and not something that's actually going to be you know people are not gonna be buying these in the store but the motherfuckers in the hurricane right now fucking wishing they had some fucking pizza hut fucking shoes (laughs) 
All right. So I actually, so the actual full video of this thing actually is on multiple different porn websites. I believe it's actually on X Hamster. Is it on X Hamster? Yeah, it is. Wow. I think I looked it up earlier. Huh. That which actually goes against my notion that I'd actually Damn, never been on X Hamster. Two minutes. Yeah. So um, <laughs> this is uh, this is the uh, the ET uh, pornography. <laughs> Not safe for work. Be careful yeah. if you're googling this. Uh, you know, behind the desk b- desk there. Okay. So you want to play this thing or what? Yeah. So let or me. Do you know. want to read this? Uh, oh, yeah. No, I mean we don't. It's have just. To. Oh yeah. This is the video corner. Fuck reading right. anything. Yeah. All right. One, okay. two, three. <laughs> There's a guy just getting his boogie down with. Uh, oh, it's not working. Mine's not working. It's just black. No. <laughs> oh, my God. It's not loading. Vimeo, you suck. Wait, let me refresh. I'm going right. to refresh. Real refresh. Quick. And then I'm going to click play. It was just a black screen. You gotta get there your- it is. Holy fuck. You got it. All right. Yeah. You want me to pause it or are you going? Well, three, two, one. All right. Wow. He is just getting his boogie down. So this is, this is a porn. I don't exactly know when it's from, but it's sometime in the 90s. It must be. And this is the most disturbing looking fucking uh, E.T. motherfucker you have ever seen in your life. It is just it's a chick with a disturbing E.T. head on with absolutely no motion um, and just getting straight up boned. Here is ET actually first um, coming onto Earth here before yeah, coming on Earth. Spaceship action. Oh, e- ET is uh, oh, playing with herself there. She is touching her space vagina. Oh, and it is. It is. Oh, oh. Ah! <laughs> there is actually a motion on that face. Oh my oh, god! Geez. It is seriously horrifying. Oh no! Oh, oh god damn it! ET is licking. I see a tongue in there somewhere. Oh god, licking the finger, and there is a girl that is being boned here. Oh my god! I wonder if this ET is an IMDb for this. I don't know. What's what's wrong with that finger? What, what's on that finger? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. So I think, wait, is there different? Because that looked like that was E.T. Oh, getting a blowjob dude. earlier. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think it's, I think it, they they go back and forth between. Well, isn't E.T. unisex? Oh, yeah, that's right. Both male and female. And uh, we should also mention, too, that this is not like you know, the porn parodies of like the bigger studio <laughs> porn things like this shit is straight up filmed on a fucking like, like Casio recorder. Like this Dude, shit is so, it's so weird with that head, that head, the eyes don't blink no, and it's just like no. staring off into space while it's getting boned. Oh my God. It this is, is so strange. And keep in mind the whole video does exist online. I feel dirty for watching this. And there it is. There it is. The E.T. porn. <laughs> that was very strange. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely. I didn't hate it, though. That was better than the the uh, that other robot video from last week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah don't the worry. The crying robot? <laughs> don't worry. I have plenty. I have plenty MacBook, of stuff. MacBook uh, existential? I, yeah. MacBook uh, X. Uh, yeah. I think that was it. Anyway. So, yeah. Interesting. Go check out your ET X hamster uh, video. It's kind of funny. And, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, hey, if you enjoy ET getting boned, that's your video. Yeah. Uh, so we're actually going to start putting the JOAT video corner videos on to the JOAT podcast website. We're going to start having them in the blog every week. So you you guys can check out all the videos that we watched on the podcast and you can further understand what, what the hell we're watching, what the fuck we were (laughs) watching and trying to, uh, and put into our brains and then try to tell you about. So, um, yeah, definitely check that out. So, uh, but from one JOAT favorite to another, it's time for the results of last week's universal call out, which is typewriters. So typewriters, typewriters, you weren't. And and last week is in quotes, quote unquote last week. I know it's been, yeah, it's been two weeks, but whatever. So, you know, once again, the universal call out delivers for typewriters. Not as much as it normally delivers, but. Yeah, but we had a stacked episode this week, yeah. so we're good. I mean, 
you know, what were we at? Hour and 35 already. And we're just now getting to the universal call out. So uh, the first story this week are from the weeks <laughs> of the universal call out. How typewriters have changed everything. It was a uh, link from a website that talks about the history of typewriters. The Boston Globe. Dating all the way back Boston to... Boston Globe. 1888. Yeah. Citing typewriter saved 40 minutes out of an hour compared with the pen and one person. Typing was faster than six clerks with a pen. So one person on a typewriter was faster than six people with pen and paper. Uh, it was a boon for female employment in the early 1900s because a lot of your secretaries, clerks, you know, a lot of the jobs that uh, that women are really good with because uh, women are really good with <laughs> not their to hands, be, Not right? to be misogynist or no. anything. Well, we're talking about 1900s. Hey, hey. There aren't a lot of women that are engineers. I don't even think they had the right to vote in the 1900s. Did they, Ray? Uh, I don't know exactly when they got the right to vote. But, okay. Yeah, well, I mean. probably not. Uh, so for women, this was a big thing in the early 1900s. And now they have exosuits. Yes, and now they're working at Lowe's with their yeah. exos, which is probably like 20 times worse than fucking being a fucking secretary. But uh 1920 by the way. Okay, there you go. So this was a lot a lot earlier than uh the women's right to vote. Uh and it says here we ought to look at the typewriter as the equal of the telephone and the electric light in creating the new businesses of the world in the 20th century. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought this was interesting too because this is basically a guy who is he's the last typewriter uh repairman in Boston. So there used to be he's been doing it for a long time and there used to be a lot of companies in the yellow pages as they refer to uh ah. <laughs> and uh now he's the last one and he actually gets a lot of business still because there still really is a lot of typewriters out there. You've got places that have them as like the backup for if the computers go down and then you have, you know, like uh, the, you know, municipalities and stuff like that. And so, um, he's basically still out there and he's still running his typewriter fixing game and, uh, he's doing pretty well for himself. So there's kind of this cool little article about him and it kind of delves a little bit into the history of the typewriter and how uh, impactful it was. And then talks about how someone got killed by a typewriter. Oh wait, no, that didn't nah. happen this week. Thankfully. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to get murdered oh. by a typewriter, but it didn't happen this week. So that would have been so crazy. Yeah. So anyway, craziness. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you ready for some inspire about Ray? Oh, we got one more story too. Oh, we got another one. Yeah. Yeah. One, uh, one last one. We got the, uh, the typewriter documentary. Um, so Tom Hanks. Yeah. Tom Hanks, big collector of typewriters. Who knew? Yeah. yeah. Is this thing? Uh, I don't know. I was going to say, is this on Netflix, but nobody's no, no, it's like, a, it. it's like a brand new, uh, California typewriter. Yeah, it's a brand new documentary that's uh, just made its debut at the uh, Telerud Film Festival. I guess it's getting really good reviews. Uh, Tom Hanks is in it. I guess he's a big collector of uh, typewriters, vintage typewriters. Uh, and uh, Sam Shepard, uh, who had uh, died recently, was also in the movie. He's a big collector, John Mayer. Um, and so they kind of talk about their love of the typewriter. And uh, I guess for me, the big thing that I kind of realized, I mean, I'm not a typewriter guy. I never had a typewriter my whole fucking life, but I think it's just kind of the big thing with, you know, like, it's like the reason why I like vinyl records, you know, it's like that kind of like, um, there's something kind of classic and nostalgic about it. And, uh, you know, kind of having that, uh, that physical, um, that physical thing that, you know, like if you're a writer or something that you like do your writing on. So it's just kind of different. It's a little bit more connected than, you know, your computer would be, I guess. So. Uh, yeah. As a person that has actually typed on a typewriter, I'm not a huge fan of it. I can see why it was so popular back then. Computers are so good. Like there's a lot of things that you can do on the computer a lot faster and more accurately than a typewriter. But uh, yeah, I can see, I can see why people would like it, like the hipsters and stuff. But uh <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's so hateful. If, if you had, if I had a choice between typing on a computer and typing on a typewriter, well, it says here that uh, they, they got a lot of young people buying these old ass typewriters, which, you know, I'm sure if you asked one of these young people to type up a letter format for you, uh, like three pages long, 
it would look like a giant glob of shit because they don't know what the fuck they're doing. But, Man, that uh, was a gross generalization. And I would actually vote that they, I mean, if they were invested enough to go and buy a typewriter that they would probably know what check, they were doing. They, I mean, they would, I mean, I doubt obviously it. we were making, you know, sweeping generalizations, but I'm sure that some of them, you know, have a deep enough investment in it to do some research on it. Right. So like, you know, like for me, like, all right. So when I grew up, um, you know, I was born in the early eighties. So like by the time that I started getting into music and stuff, the record was no longer really that popular anymore. So I had cassette tapes. And so anyway, probably, I don't know, maybe 10 to 12 years ago, I started getting into records and I got a record player. And so, you know, Hey, I didn't know anything about it. So I did a bunch of research and I learned about it. And so, so I wasn't just, you know, some fucking dope, you know, that was collecting old pieces of plastic. So I'm sure that not everybody is going to be that way, but anyway, yeah, I'm also sure too, that these I was going to let you get away with that. These guys are not using the typewriters that they're buying because what are they going to type? Listen and where to are they negative, send it to? Listen to negative Nancy over here. What, fucking what, negative Nancy. What are you typing on a typewriter in the year 2017? And where are you sending it to? That's what I want to know. I mean, you don't have to send it anywhere. You could just <laughs> do, you could just write things, right? Like you could just type, you could just type. <laughs> no, I mean like if somebody was like a writer or something, like, I suppose, you know, maybe they feel more connected to their which, fucking typewriter. They want like the complete they fucking write poetry. They fucking do whatever. I don't know. It's just the complete opposite. They write their goddamn journal to buy a typewriter to begin with, <laughs> but whatever. How is that? <laughs> Because you buy a typewriter to type stuff and to make letters and to send them to people and to well, create you to be the determiner of why you have because a typewriter. In the 1900s, that's what typewriters were used for when they were invented. They were used for a lot of things. I'm, I'm, not I'm sure that people wrote journals and shit on it. And they just like, you know, Do you know how much it costs to buy ink for a typewriter. No, I don't. I've never had a why typewriter before. Why would you before. waste useful paper and ink for a journal on it you said people use a journal for a typewriter yeah i'm sure how do you think that people oh moving along you don't this, think this, so this has gone off the rails oh my god i 1000 percent don't believe that i'm gonna look that shit up dude yeah, you don't may, think maybe, that anyone ever has ever written a journal as a in, i'm saying when typewriters were invented that was not its purpose and that people weren't using their resources as far as paper and ink to create journals when they have fucking had a probably walk to the department store back then to get fucking <laughs> paper for their typewriters. What world are you living in? I mean, come on. <laughs> the same world as you. Oh my God. How are you going to be the determining factor of what people strictly use typewriters for? I'm sure when computers were invented, they, they weren't thinking that, you know, we would have a podcast of this nature, but Things change. Time changes. People use things for different purposes. I think so. I'm going to go home and uh, write my journal on my typewriter. You don't have a typewriter. You're not a fucking hip. Like, <laughs> I'm going to buy a motherfucking typewriter right now. I'm going to buy a typewriter now, and I'm going to learn how to type it. I'm going to uh, type 90 so words funny. a minute. And I'm I've never heard of anything like that before and in my I, entire and life. I'm gonna, and I'm going to write, Eddie is not the determining the the be all end all of what people can use a typewriter for well we can ask the people if you have a typewriter have you ever written a journal to yourself on your typewriter because if you have i would love to read it and i would love they're not to gonna let you read their typewriter journal why not what do you have to hide <laughs> they're not gonna do that what do you have to hide don't go in my back room where i have my typewriter set up yeah okay? and hopefully where i have like, all my inner you know, musings the structure and the uh, composition of your work doesn't look like a giant glob of crap because it's not easy to make. Or it can be because you can do whatever you want with your goddamn typewriter. It's not easy typewriter. to make. Uh, Eddie, someone who's never owned a typewriter in his life, should not be the one to tell you what you can do and what you cannot do with your typewriter. I used to type on a typewriter very often when I was. Did you a young own? Kid. Did you own a typewriter? Did you ever write a journal? How jour did I own? Did you write a journal on it? Did I have a bank account? With when I was seven years old, I, don't I probably know when did you, not. I don't know when you How had a typewriter. I possibly own a typewriter. I don't know when you had a typewriter. I don't even have like the resources to buy one at such a young age. I don't know how old you were when you had a typewriter. This seven. is a story. Okay, now I know you were seven. Maybe, maybe you were mowing someone's lawn and you were saving all of your little your dollars. And at you're seven years old. Sure, you didn't. You didn't. 
mow anyone's lawn. I don't know. Whatever. Inspire you had a fucking paper a route. for the win. <laughs> you had a paper route. I don't know. If you're still listening, we thank you because this has gone completely off the rails. It's a podcast. It could be whatever it needs to be. So we're fine. Inspiro Bot. Let's see what you got, Inspiro Bot. All right. Inspiro Bot. Are the politicians razors of joy with a man standing in the sea up to his dick? Or that might be a woman. Yeah, I will say it's a man. He's got the water level up to his thighs. Looking at the water, it's kind of gloomy. Are politicians the razors of joy? I don't know what that means. I, I hope mine know. has a typewriter on it. That's all I hope. That would be cool. Doesn't Raven have a typewriter? No, it's just a meme. Oh, I was going to say, you could ask Raven if, uh, if he <laughs> writes his journals on a typewriter. That'd be oh, interesting. my God. Oh, my God. I'm gonna, if he does, then your point is valid. I'm going to do exhaustive research on this over the next week, by the way, just so you know. So prepare yourself. You better do some counter. Uh, I don't care. Okay. So neuroscience doesn't change the gold standard. Ooh, it doesn't. And the gold standard is doing for yourself. You don't need someone to control your brain. If you want to type your little fingers on your typewriter, you can type whatever you want in whatever format you want. And far be it from anyone else to tell you how and why and whatever. If it doesn't look professional, I'm going to crumple it up and throw it in the trash. You're never going to see it. Garbage. Never. If you're buying a typewriter, be professional. Don't be a fucking idiot. You're never going to see it. Never going to see it. I hope that we go back. I hope all the computers crash, and I hope that you have to buy a typewriter. And I hope we have to do the podcast on a typewriter. We have to just type out everything that we're conversing. I hope that happens. I hope that doesn't happen. God help me. You don't know what you're asking for. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. Have you ever typed on a typewriter? Uh, yeah, like in school, but it's been a long fucking time. Mm. Yeah, it sucks, I know. You have it to, sucks a lot. You have to type, and then you have to like click that thing, and you have to hit X and stuff when you have to cry. Yeah, it's fucking bullshit. No eraser on the typewriter. Yeah, no. no. So. Okay, uh, and uh, let's do our uh, let's do our randomizer. So uh, right. maybe I should say backspace. Yeah. Isn't it weird that computers replace delete with backspace? Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I don't know. My, I, guess, I guess it does make more sense. It depends on your keyboard, actually. Mine's mine's delete. When you press delete, it deletes the letters. Yeah. Huh. I have a Mac. Different. You have a Mac. I have a Mac. Oh, a Mac. I have a Mac. Yeah. Yeah. It's not backspace. All right. Anyway, uh, how many topics do we want? Uh, let's go. Twelve. Well, is that sure. what we did last time? Sure. Why not? And let's hope we don't get typewriters again. Typewriters, such good quality content with typewriters. <laughs> we would never argue over anything else but typewriters, right? This was great. Oh, are you ready? I was born ready. Seashells, gymnastics, bananas, mules, jewelry, rabbits, wrestling, typewriters, <laughs> justice, bakeries, horses, and banana. <laughs> oh, bananas twice. Double your pleasure. We got with bananas. We got banana and bananas, and we also got typewriters again. <laughs> well, I'm going mules. Oh my! Because God. I kind of feel like a jackass. Oh, today. Oh, I guess I'm gonna go with wrestling. Wrestling? I'm gonna go with wrestling. Oh no! All right. Uh, I'm not mad at wrestling. All right, that's that's fine. Let's do it because typewriters are so bad. <laughs> Hopefully, a wrestler doesn't die this week. God, I hope not. Or nothing crazy happens yeah. to any wrestlers out there. Yeah. Stay alive, guys. So, all right. So, uh, with that being said, we're going to hit the road. Uh, just so you guys know, we have an awesome episode for you guys next week. Uh, robots are going to be overthrowing the motherfucking show. So, we have the all robot spectacular that is coming next week. We have a ton of awesome robot stories. And best believe there's going to be some stuff about sex robots. So, and so much more. So, Ooh. yeah. So, love you guys. We Thanks are, for sticking with us. We are out. Bye bye.